Welcome, welcome. A live English lesson today on natural monuments, natural landmarks in the United States. Natural, not man-made, natural. They are made by nature. But before we start that, I would love to give a huge shout out to Freddie Wolf. I thought he might be a little mad at me. Last week, I had a prediction about the World Cup. It did not age well. I predicted France would win, but Argentina won. So I thought Freddie might not be too happy, but he did. Maybe because I picked France, but thank you so much. He wanted to send a little Christmas present. Freddie, thank you so much. I have a little something for you. This little super chat thing here. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, thank you so much. So I may not be the biggest English teacher on YouTube. I may not be the best English teacher on YouTube, but you know what I do have? The best students. That There's no mistaking that. That is true. Amina, Linda, I rem Audie, I remember a couple super chats recently. Thank you so much. It does mean so much. And all of the money goes back into the channel. New lights. I have a new light in the front. You can't tell. Thank you, Freddie, so much. There are 75 people watching on Facebook, YouTube, 10 people on Instagram. Hope you're doing well for this live lesson on natural landmarks, natural monuments in the U.S. The, a monument is made usually by a human, but I call these monuments or landmarks as well. But before we do that, the fine people at Amigo got a little something to share with you. Freddie, thank you so much. That will come back. I will put that back on there. Oh my goodness. Hang on. Hang on. Audi the tie. Audi tie. Audi the tie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Audi is a gold member as well. He supports the channel so much. Let me, we'll talk about Amigo in just a minute because they are offering a chance to win a free five week speaking course. But before we get to that, Audi, we need to get to the lesson too. But Audi, thank you so much. I also have a little something for you here. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, so generous. Thank you so much, Audi. That is amazing. So, like I was saying, really quickly, the fine folks at Amigo are offering a free five-week speaking course to one of the viewers here on YouTube. And what I am going to ask is, after this stream finishes, the chat will go away, but the comments will open up. So if you can't stay for the full live lesson, come back for the replay. If you're watching on Instagram, if you're watching on Facebook, come back in about an hour and leave a comment and I will pick a winner probably on December 25th, Christmas day for people who celebrate it and also the podcast is coming out today so if you're listening or watching this live or before december 25th leave a comment and i will pick a winner it's an 80 dollars value fine folks an amico amigo amigo my italian slipping in there yeah so give you a little uh Look at what their logo looks like. Again, Audi, thank you so much. And normally the course is $80, but they are offering 51% off with that link. I will talk more about them at the end of this because I did sit in on a class, but you're all here to learn English. And we're talking about monuments, natural monuments in the U.S., so there's the uh, thumbnail. Look at that handsome guy on the thumbnail. Yeah, AI made that. So I'm hoping people will look at the thumbnail 
and say, whoa, I want to learn English from that good looking guy. And then they click on the real thing. They might be disappointed, but hopefully they stay for the English. Hopefully they stay for the English. Look at that guy. He's got hair, no wrinkles. I like that guy. Just really quickly, we are all in the chat right now. We're all in the chat right now because it's live. To leave your comment for the free five-week speaking course, make sure you wait until the end of the stream and leave it in the comments. All right? Now, let's get on to the lesson. Say hello to a couple people, though. Hey, Matthias from Poland. Hope you're doing well. Mahmoud, hope you're doing well. So Casey's in here. Whoa, angry grandpa. It's a new face. Hope you're doing well. Hopefully you're not too angry. Is the course for English learners, is it American English? It is American English. Chelsea, she owns the company. I have been speaking with her every day. She's really passionate. She is originally from South Korea, but she moved here to the United States when she was 17. So when you listen to her speak, she will probably be in most of the classes. She definitely has an American accent. Yes, it's, it's the perfect company for me to pair with. A lot of companies ask. There's an earbud company. There's a, a makeup company. Like, no, my viewers are not going to want anything to do with that. They're here to learn English. But when Chelsea reached out from Amigo, it seemed like the right fit. So we will be, uh, I will be talking about them quite a bit, but you're here for English, right? You're here to learn about natural landmarks. So seven minutes in, we should get started. But wait, there's more. Hang on. Amina, she lives in Canada. She is experiencing some rough weather just like I am, just like Bob the Canadian was. He lost his internet. I am more west of him. We are going to talk about directions in this live lesson. I am more west. He is east of me. The storm is pretty bad there. Where Amina lives, the storm is pretty bad there. But she did send a very generous super sticker. And she did it last week, I think, as well. I think a $50 super sticker last week or two weeks ago. Amina has been very generous to the channel. Thank you so much. I just hope I'm doing a good enough job. Lots of pressure. Thank you so much. Got a little something for you, Amina. You know what's coming up. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Grabbed a little bit of water there. Amina, thank you so much. But 99 people watching on Facebook and YouTube, you are here to learn English. So I say eight minutes in, let's get to the English. We, But Amina, thank you so much. We were talking, started talking about national parks. In the United States, we have national parks. And that is land that is set aside for the people. And we are going to talk about that English phrasal verb very soon. But let's first talk about what a national park is. A national park is protected federal land that is open to the public. Now that sentence, I think, has a few very tough words in it. Federal public. We are going to talk about that in just a second. But in the United States, we have 63 national parks across the United States, 63. And they are some of the most famous. Maybe you have heard of the Smoky Mountains. Maybe you have heard of Yellowstone. Maybe you've heard of the Everglades. Well, if not, we're going to talk about two of them in this English lesson. But that word federal might be new for you. So 
we have 50 states in the United States, 50 states in the United States. Each state has its own government, has its own set of rules, but there are also federal rules. There is a federal government and that affects everyone in the United States. So federal means it has something to do with the entire country, the government in our capital, Washington, DC. So our country has a president. He is Joe Biden. He is head of the federal government, but I live in the state of Maine. My state has a governor and she, her name is Janet Mills. She is the person who governs my state. So it can be a little tricky for people visiting the United States because there are some laws that affect everybody but there are some laws that are different. It just depends on which state you live in. We have a federal government and we have a state government. So let's talk about a rule that is a federal rule. That is a national rule. You might hear that too. National, federal, they're pretty much interchangeable. A federal law is that you need to be 21 to drink alcohol. It doesn't matter where in the United States you are. If you are not 21, you cannot legally drink alcohol. But there's a law in my state, or maybe a lack of a law, that says you do not need a helmet to ride a motorcycle in Maine, where I live. You can get on a motorcycle, rev it up. Maybe that's a new English phrasal verb for you. But if I am on a motorcycle and I go like this, and it sounds like this, that's revving up a motorcycle. I can get on a motorcycle, rev it up, drive down the street without a helmet in Maine. But... If I go to a different state, I might get in trouble. I might get a ticket. So I am going to focus on national parks in this lesson. These are the big ones. National park. The federal government in Washington, D.C. said, this land is so nice, we need to set it aside. We will talk about that phrasal verb in a minute. But also, each state has its own parks. We have state parks. In my state, I don't know how many we have. We got a few. I would say maybe 30. And people can use it for a small fee. The same goes for national parks. If you visit, I can see out my window. The wind is really picking up. Something just flew by my window. What is that? Hopefully we don't lose power. (laughs) All right. I don't think we will. Maybe if I did this lesson a couple hours from now, we would. But let's talk about set aside. Hello to everyone watching on Instagram. Come over to Facebook. Come over to YouTube. You can leave a comment. Each state has its own state parks. Land set aside for public use. People are able to use it for a small fee. So when you hear public, think people. Let's check the chat. Make sure nothing is going on here. Hey, I'm Diwali. What what is that? Is that Somalia? Where are those flags from? Let me get my glasses on. That looks like Somalia to me. So maybe you're from Somalia. If you are, welcome. If you're from somewhere else, still, welcome. Yeah, this might be a great place to find a speaking partner. And the great thing about speaking partners is they will help you speak. But some people might be a little creepy. 
or they might not be a great partner. I will talk more about Amigo later, but they have figured it out. They have figured it out. No creepy people there. All right. Thank you for all the hearts. Stas is here. I did. I missed it. Uh oh. Did I miss something from Stas? He's in Denmark. He is a channel member. Thank you so much. All right. Let's see Stas. I do see it. Hey, can I see? Wait, what? You left a super chat. I did not see that super chat. But yes, I did. Right now. I do now. Stas, I'm sorry. I did not see that. But now I do. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie is my wife. She is also in the chat. She's making sure everybody plays nice. Stas, no, Stan, 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 thank you so much. Thank you so much. I got a little something for you. Maybe I should wear my glasses more often. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Every time the super chat comes on, the microphone goes off, the camera goes off, I take a drink. Stan, thank you so much. That is so very kind of you. Sorry, I missed it the first time. Audie, we got Audie. Thank you so much. And we got Freddie. Freddie, thank you. And Amina was down there too. Yeah, I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. I know that uh, money is tight for some people more so this year than last year. So please, thank you for the super chats, but do not feel like you need to. All of the English here is free. Hello, Radu. I remember your name from Facebook. Welcome, welcome. Just checking the chat, making sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, Dags is here. He says Stan is my Stan. Um, that's slang, by the way. Mode using some slang. Stan, it just means like a super fan. I don't think I have fans. I think I have students, though. Thank you so much. All right, let's get back to the lesson. Alberto, hope you're doing well in Colombia. I wonder, I think most of South America is celebrating Argentina's victory. I know some of my friends in Brazil, once Brazil was out, were like, Argentina, bring the cup home to South America. Ah, Privet. Privet, Yulia's here. Hope you're doing well. All right, let's do it. Back to this. I wish I could check the chat more, but you are not here for me to read comments, right? In the chat, you are here for me to teach English. We were talking about set aside and I do have a sentence for you. Americans love to use this English, English phrasal verb a lot. Set aside, it means to be saved or reserved. So let's take a look at that picture right there. If you're listening on the podcast, I will describe it to you. But there are seats in a theater, and some of them have the word reserved written on them. Those seats are set aside for somebody. So if they are not set aside for you, you cannot sit there. This public land in the national parks, it is set aside so people can use it. Those 63 national parks will never be purchased by somebody who is rich and wants to make that land private. They are for public use. As long as there is a country called the United States, those national parks will be for everyone. Everyone can use them. So let's take a look at a sentence with set aside in it. I am going to be late. Can you set aside three tickets for my family? 
So maybe you are worried about the show selling out. If something sells out, it means there are no more tickets left. If you don't have a ticket, you can't attend. So you might want some seats set aside, reserved, or saved for you. Let's get into the first national park, and it's called Yellowstone. Yellowstone National Park. It might be the most famous. So for each of these parks, we are going to talk about where it's located and maybe one or two of the attractions there. So almost every park has something kind of crazy that you might only find in that one place. Yellowstone does have a very famous geyser. We will talk about that soon. Hey, if you're watching on Instagram, come over to Facebook. You can chat with 113 people that are watching. All right, let's check the chat just to make sure. Hey, Mega, hope you're doing well in India. Yeah, Mode says you can set aside or put aside some money. Yes, great example. So maybe some people watching today will be celebrating Christmas in a couple days. There might be a few people who are going to celebrate Christmas. And maybe earlier in the year, you set aside some money to buy presents. Yeah, you saved it. You didn't want to spend it on candy. I love spending money on candy. My family got me some candy last candy last night. Favorite candy. I heard something beep here that I did not do. So hopefully the audio is fine. It's raining out there, but I, I don't know what I don't know what that was. All right. Um, so yeah, perfect. Set aside. Hopefully, I'm sure the the chat will let me know if something isn't working. Mike, yeah, leave something for a later date. Well, put off is different. Put off is different. Put off means you're not doing it for some reason. You could do it, but maybe you are lazy. No, put off means I could probably do a whole English lesson on the phrasal verb put off because it has a couple different meanings. But the way you used it, thank you, Mode. Mode said the audio is fine. But the way you used it, it means to delay because you're lazy, mostly. Yeah, I am going to put off doing my English work because I would rather watch the World Cup. Maybe you did that last week. You put off your English. All right. What's that? Oh, thank you, Jamie. Jamie. Instagram. I'm streaming live on Instagram, but I'm telling everyone on Instagram, the party is here on YouTube. So we were talking about Yellowstone National Park. And one of the features of Yellowstone is that it was our first national park. It became a national park in 1872. The federal government, you know what that is now, in Washington, D.C., said this land is so beautiful, we don't want a Walmart or a Target being built on that land. I don't think there were Walmarts back in 1872. But we don't want somebody to come in and destroy this land. This is set aside for everyone to enjoy. It's public land. Maybe we should talk about public. Something else just flew by the window. Focus, focus on English. Uh, public means everybody can use it. If you look at that picture, it looks to be a person on a bus or maybe a train. And it could be public transportation. That means everyone can use it. You might have to pay a fee, but it is open to the public. You might hear that sometimes open to the public. Private is the opposite. Private is off limits. You need special permission to use it. There is private transportation. 
excuse me, maybe you can hire a limo. A limousine is a really big car and it's probably going to be expensive, but you can hire a limo and that would be private, maybe for just you and your friends, but the public wouldn't come into the limo. Random people would not go into your limo and say, what are you doing here? No, private doesn't mean public. It's the opposite. Off limits is something that you might hear. When we talk about private, you need special permission to use it. Let's talk about geography here for a second. Where in the U.S. is Yellowstone National Park located? Well, you are going to learn the names of three states. And they are probably not exactly easy to pronounce. There's Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Wyoming, Idaho, Montana. So Yellowstone is located right in the middle of those three states, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. There is a joke about Idaho that I'm not going to make, but it's kind of funny. Maybe Jamie will make the joke. Ooh, no pain. Where is that? Where did it go? No pain, no gain. Going back to put off, procrastinate is a great synonym. It's another word that means put off. Yes, a lot of times they can. All right, Mahmoud, sorry. I'm leaving because my messages are ignored. Okay, bye-bye, Mahmoud. I'm sorry. I'm trying to teach to everyone. Lots in the chat, though. Lots in the chat. Hey, Mike, I would love to visit those places also. I've only been to one national park, two national parks. And we are going to save those for last. Brent, I heard a few days ago that in the U.S., sometimes Santa Claus is called Kris Kringle. Do you ever use that name? Um, I probably don't. No. But I think for most Americans, if you say Kris Kringle, they will know that it is Santa Claus. Harry 300. Hope you're doing well. All right, one of the most famous things in Yellowstone National Park is a geyser called Old Faithful. Geyser, not geezer. That's different. That is an old man. A geezer is an old man. We are talking about a geyser. And I do have a sentence for you. Geyser. And I just copied this. I just copied this from the internet. So it should be true. Everything on the internet is true, right? A geyser is a rare kind. So there aren't a lot of them. A geyser is a rare kind of hot spring that is under pressure and erupts, sending jets of water and steam into the air. So this geyser, in Yellowstone National Park, named Old Faithful. It erupts about 20 times a day. And there was an earthquake in the 1950s that messed up the timing of Old Faithful. But before that earthquake, you could predict exactly when Old Faithful would erupt. Now, They can only predict about 90% of the time, but it usually goes off. That's another phrasal verb we might use for erupting. The geyser, Old Faithful, usually goes off about 20 times a day. You know what else you might see in Yellowstone National Park? Buffalo. You might see buffalo. There is a picture of a buffalo. If you're listening on the podcast, I don't really know how to describe a buffalo, a big hairy cow, maybe buffalo, but 
in Yellowstone National Park. It's huge. It's massive. And buffalo are able to roam free. We're going to talk about that verb roam in a minute. No, not the capital of Italy. Something else. In Yellowstone, you can see buffalo roaming freely. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I'm going to check the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. All right, my mood is back. He was JK. He was just kidding. Just kidding. Well, look at this, Constantine. I hope you're doing well. Did you see this? Are you a time traveler? Did you go ahead in time? Indigenous. That is one of the difficult words we are going to learn in just a little bit. But yes, Yellowstone does have connections to indigenous people. And we will talk about exactly what indigenous is. Harry has a question. Yellowstone. Why Yellowstone? I don't know. I looked this up. I wanted to make sure that Yellowstone was one word. And it is. Is it? I had a slide. Yeah. Yellowstone is one word. I thought it, well, is it two? No. And you can see in the picture, it's one word, but I don't know why it's called Yellowstone. Are there yellow rocks in Yellowstone? I don't know. Good question. Nita, first time you're here. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right. What? Harry lives in Indonesia and he says, we have buffalo. I did not know that. More about the buffalo. How about this? Because the buffalo, let's get back to the slide. The buffalo in Yellowstone, they're actually bison. And I don't know the difference between buffalo and bison. We are going to talk about alligators and crocodiles later. I am not a scientist. I thought, should I talk about the difference between buffalo and bison? And I said, no, because I think Americans will use buffalo for bison and bison for buffalo. You can find something on the internet that will tell you the difference. But I think most people just use those two terms interchangeably. Are they the same animal? No. Can I tell the difference? No. Is it important for you to learn the difference? That's up to you. But I didn't think it was important. So they're technically bison but I say Buffalo and they look a lot like that guy in the picture, but I did use a verb that I thought might be difficult. And that is Rome. It's a good verb to know if somebody or an animal is roaming, then it means you can walk around and go wherever you want. Here's a sentence for you, which is true. I have students who like to leave class and roam the hallways. Teachers will use that verb all of the time. They might ask, hey, mind if I go to the bathroom? Of course not. You're 14. Feel free. Just take a pass. They need a pass to be in the hallway. But a lot of times they will go to the bathroom, go in, but then maybe roam the hallways, waving to their friends and other classes. Yeah. So you can roam around. Sometimes we use that phrasal verb. You can roam around in a new city. You don't have any plans. You don't have a specific place you want to go. You can just roam around the city with no plans. So I thought that might be a new verb. It's a good verb to know. That's one roam. That's another roam. Different spelling, but they are pronounced in the same exact way. To roam the hallways, 
to visit Rome. My daughter is very lucky. In 2024, she is going to be visiting Rome. Yeah, I'm very jealous. One day, I think I will be there. Yulia, the weekend has already started in the U.S. Um, no, the, the weekend... The weekend will start Saturday as usual. Some people still have to work today, but luckily teachers, because I'm a teacher in a public school, a public school is free to everyone. Taxes pay for it, but a private school, I do not teach in a private school. You have to pay extra money to go to a private school. Hey, Zanep, I hope I said your name correctly. Found me two days ago and you were here live. Perfect. Brazil is in the house. Hope you're doing well. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, I think Buffalo is a cow. It is from the cow family. If you look, it looks like a hairy cow to me. Probably bigger. Who knows? In that picture, is it a bison or a buffalo? If you look at that picture and see the back of the buffalo, it goes up a little bit like a bump. And we call those things humps. Like If you know a camel in English, some camels have one hump. Some camels have two humps. Something to do with the hump on a buffalo's back and the hump on a bison's back makes it a different animal? I don't know. I don't know. Not sure. No way. Alberto. Buffalo's in Colombia. I did not know that. Hmm. Interesting. But both buffalo and bison live in Yellowstone National Park. Right. Well, m- mode. Let's not make things too complicated. We also talk about roaming when we talk about technology. It's happening less and less, but if you are on your phone and you are roaming, you might get charged more money. It's very complicated, but yeah, Mode is a very good English speaker. Uh, it's, it's, Mahmood, um, I have never, never met one of my subscribers. I don't have many subscribers, so hopefully, hopefully one day. All right. Freddie Wolf, great question. Do roaming and wandering have the same meaning? I would say yes. Yes. Both mean walking around with no place to go. So you would not wander to the store. Like you would go to the store. You know your final destination. You know where you are going. But if you're just walking around, you could roam into the store, meaning you had no plans to visit. All right, let's do it. Thank you so much. Great video. I hope to keep going here. Oh, I said it correctly. Yeah, hopefully it continues to be great. Thank you so much. Hey, if you're watching on Instagram, come over to YouTube. That is where the party is. Roaming. Okay. I'm glad that some people know roaming when it comes to technology. Hakeem, nice job. Yes. What he said. I don't want to confuse uh, too many people, though. Roaming. Nicely done. Salim, I do have an English lesson about the prom. If you check English with this guy, prom, I did a live lesson about six months ago. India is in the house. Thank you so much. Arimdra. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. All right. Amina's still here. All right, let's continue with the English lesson to help you improve your English. That is why you are here. Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier. 
This is another very famous natural landmark in the United States. And one thing that makes it so famous is that it is one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world, Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier is one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. About 80,000 people would be affected if Mount Rainier erupted. And just last week, in the lesson about hot things, we talked about volcanoes. So I wanted to squeeze in a little review for you if you watched last week's lesson. This would be a good time to remind everyone watching, could you please share this lesson, like this lesson? If you have a friend that is learning English, share this with them. They might be helped. Please like this so other people can find it. I'm going to take a sip of water. If this lesson is helping your English improve, don't forget to tap that like button and share it with a friend who's learning English. All right. Thank you, random guy, reminding you to like the lesson. Mount Rainier is the tallest mountain in the lower 48. Hmm. So after that sentence, you might be wondering, Brent, what is the lower 48? You will hear Americans say that sometimes. The lower 48. Now we have this massive state called Alaska. We also have another state called Hawaii. Hawaii is an island. Alaska is way up north by Canada. But the lower 48 are the other 48 states minus Alaska and minus Hawaii. So there is a picture right there of the lower 48. You can see there is no Alaska and there is no Hawaii. Now, Alaska has some of the tallest mountains in the country. It has the tallest mountain in North America, which we will talk about later. But Mount Rainier is the tallest mountain in the lower 48. So take away all of the mountains in Alaska. Mount Rainier is the tallest. You might see Mount Whitney listed too, but from sea level to the top, we call that the peak. Mount Rainier is the tallest. Earlier, was it Freddie? No, Constantine mentioned indigenous. It's going to be a good time to talk about indigenous. Indigenous. Mount Rainier is sometimes called Tacoma, which is its indigenous name. Well, what is indigenous? I tried to find pictures of people who might be indigenous to give you an idea. I did not ask them if they were indigenous, indigenous, not easy to say, but when I looked up indigenous people, these pictures came up. So I'm hoping they are indigenous. The people who were living in the Americas before Europeans discovered the new world are known as indigenous. So starting in the 1600s, Europeans from Portugal, Spain, England, France, I might be forgetting a few, came over. But there were people living here already, and they had names for these mountains. But when Europeans came over, they changed the name. But you might hear Mount Rainier, sometimes called Tacoma. A lot of the European names are going back to their indigenous names. An example of that, Denali. That is the tallest mountain in the United States, the tallest mountain in North America. And now it's called Denali. When I was a kid, 
It was called Mount McKinley. It was one of our presidents. There it is. The tallest mountain in North America is Denali. It was once called Mount McKinley. So before Europeans came over, it was Denali. Europeans came over. They called it Mount McKinley after one of our U.S. presidents. But now it's gone back to the original name, Denali. If you look up Mount McKinley on Google, you will see Denali listed instead. We're going to talk about the Sequoia. Nat- Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Forgot to tell you. Where is Mount Rainier located? It's located in a place called the Pacific Northwest. The Pacific Northwest. If you look at that picture, you can see British Columbia. That is not a U.S. state. That is a Canadian province. The U.S., we call them states. In Canada, they have provinces. So those are the the little things that the country is divided into. Some aren't so little. British Columbia looks pretty big. That's British Columbia. But Washington, Oregon, Montana, and Idaho are other states that are part of the Pacific Northwest. And Mount Rainier is in the state of Washington. Washington. And the next thing I would like to teach you about is Sequoia National Park. But maybe we should check the chat just to make sure everything is going all right. Well, you never know. Never know what next week's lesson is going to be about. I put up a poll on YouTube and this one, 53%, I think wanted this lesson. All right, mode eggs. I did not put this term up, but since mode mentioned it, let's talk about it. The lower 48 is also sometimes called the contiguous. I didn't put that up because it's kind of hard to say, but contiguous US, that would mean all of the states that are connected, the contiguous. What does mode say here? The contiguous US is another way to refer to the lower 48 in the continental US is a little different. You taught us that in a previous lesson, I think. Maybe I did. Mode, good memory, good memory. Hello to everyone on Instagram. Come over to YouTube. You can chat with us over there. Contiguous, contiguous US, same as the lower 48. Mode, nicely done. So let's talk about the Sequoia National Park. Sequoia National Park. Oh, hang on. Is indigenous like native? Could be. Um, let's see. I think indigenous would only refer to people, but native could refer to people or pretty much anything else like native corn. I know I've mentioned native corn before in a live English lesson. We have native corn in Maine where I live. It's just corn that was grown here in Maine. The wind is really Picking up, picking up. English phrasal verb means getting stronger. All right. Back to the lesson. What about these sequoias? Big trees. Sequoia is a type of tree and some of the largest on earth. Five of the top 10 trees, largest trees in the world can be found in Sequoia National Park. So they're not the five biggest, but when you look at the 10 biggest in the world, five of them are located in Sequoia National Park. And guess what? The biggest tree of all is called General Sherman. Talk about him in a minute. But where 
is Sequoia National Park located? Well, I will tell you. It is located in California. One of our most famous states, I think. California, Florida, New York, Maine. Probably not. That's where I live, though. Maine. California is on the West Coast, sometimes called the Left Coast. It's a little political, but if you look at the map, it's on the left side of the map. So the West Coast, California. I live on the East Coast in Maine, which is close to New York. Close. Six-hour drive. So New York is probably our most famous East Coast city, famous East Coast city. And Los Angeles is probably our most famous West Coast city. Famous. Not sure why I want to put a T at the end of that word. Let's talk about General Sherman. I am going to make this picture a little bigger. But General Sherman is the name of the largest tree on earth. And it can be found in Sequoia National Park. Oh, yeah, National Park. General Sherman. In that picture, General Sherman has a blanket around his trunk because there were wildfires when this picture was taken. And you can see General Sherman right there. Who's General Sherman? Well, General Sherman was a general very high in the military. He was leader of some of the military, and he was a very famous general during the Civil War. That is who the tree is named after, General Sherman. Civil War is when two armies in the same country fight against each other. And we had a civil war here in the United States back in the 1860s back in the 1860s. I also mentioned wildfire. Wildfire. A wildfire is an is un, unplanned and can burn down a lot of natural land. So in the late summer and early autumn or early fall, wildfires are a real problem in the western part of the United States. States like California, and Colorado and Wyoming, it gets really dry there. And if a fire starts, it can burn for a long time and it can burn a lot of land. Wildfires are always a threat during the late summer and early fall in California. Hope this lesson is helping. It's a long one. I know it's a long one. So you can always come back and watch on replay. Yes, you might hear American Indians sometimes for indigenous people, 100%. That's a good question. I wonder how old the oldest would be. I did not look that up. How old is General Sherman? I'm sure we could look that up. Where is he? General, I'm going to do a quick Google search. How old is the tree, General Sherman. Whoa, I got gotcha. you. I think I can share this pretty easily. Well, not pretty easy. It might take a second, but I can share it. Is it up? Yeah, it's up. Mike, good question. How old is this guy? They say according to the internet, about 2,200 years old. Pretty old. I would think one of the oldest living things on earth, General Sherman, one of them, 2,000 years. Imagine the things that tree has seen. And um, thankfully, a wildfire has not destroyed General Sherman. Mm, that would be sad. But um, luckily in that picture, see back there, that's why he has that silver blanket 
around the bottom of his trunk. I keep calling him a he, like he's a person. Yeah, General Sherman. All right, anything here? Indigenous animals? I don't, can you? I would probably use the term native. Yeah, I'm not sure. Native, you would be safe. Man, mode. We're going to talk about in, invasive species in a minute, which is the opposite of a native species. Invasive. Manual. Indigenous people whom were living when Spanish arrived. Natives are new generations aftermath. Yeah, good call. Good call. Indigenous, the original people. Yes, the OGs. I think I've used that term here before. Oh, Manuel lives in a beautiful part of the world that near Spain, a 3,000 year old tree called Drago. Drago. I think that was a name of a character in a Rocky IV movie, Ivan Drago. He was from the Soviet Union. That's a good question, Layla. I'm not sure. Indigenous span plant species that sounds right to me you can't go wrong with native though it's easier to say too all right yeah 2200 years old yeah hopefully he will last a long time v calloway hope you're doing well unfortunately you can't see the stream now oh can you listen? I think the great thing about these lessons, even though they are long, you can put them on while you're going to work. You can put them on while you are working out, doing chores, and that English is being pumped into your brain. All right. Madi, hope you're doing well. Welcome. All right, let's get back to the lesson. Hey, Instagram, if you're still watching, few people are come over to youtube yeah you'll see all the pictures over there i can't share pictures on instagram mahmoud seinfeld i am a big seinfeld fan i think mode eggs and i know maria big seinfeld fans all right back to the lesson let's get back to the lesson general sherman we were talking about that massive tree Florida. Now need to talk about the state of Florida because I would like to teach you about a place in Florida called the Everglades. The Everglades. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the map and see where Florida is located. It is on the east coast, and we would say it is in the southern part of the United States, just in case you're listening to the podcast. Florida is located in the southern part of the United States. It's on the East Coast. It's on the East Coast. Swamp, look at this picture. The Everglades is basically one big swamp. What is a swamp? Well, a swamp is always wet, and it's usually really hot and humid. We also have some slang when we use swamped. It means really busy. I was swamped at work today. Really busy. Hopefully, you are not swamped at work. It's not very fun. And you know what lives in the Everglades? The alligators alligators it's the only place in the world where both alligators and crocodiles live it's the only place in the world now what's the difference between a crocodile and an alligator i'm not a science teacher i'm an english teacher so just like with the bison and the buffalo there is a difference they're not the same species. 
fancy word for a type of animal, but I don't know the difference. I know it has something to do with their snout. So I would like to teach you that word, but I don't know the difference between a crocodile and an alligator. I only know that both species live in the Everglades, that swampy national park in Florida, but I don't know the difference. So a snout is an animal's nose. And I guess there is a difference when it comes to alligators and crocodiles. One has a long, thin snout. One has a shorter, fatter, wider snout. But I don't know the difference. And I think if you are learning English, it's not that important if you know the difference between alligators and crocodiles. Most Americans, I think, use them interchangeably. Oh, very nice. Zanop has a friend in Florida. All right. Just looking through the chat. Oh, yeah. I've been to New Orleans Manual. Yeah. There are a lot of alligators or crocodiles in the swamps of New Orleans. All right, Manual. The difference is the mouth of an alligator is sharper. So if I need to be bit by one of these animals, I want the crocodile. Not as sharp. Jeez. All right, Orkan, hope you're doing well. I know that in Canada, there's a place called Buffalo Jump where indigenous people would chase buffalo. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. There's also a city in New York called Buffalo. It's one of the 50 biggest cities in the United States. But thanks for sharing. All right. Almost done here. It's been a long lesson. But I would like to talk about invasive species. Invasive species. It's almost the opposite of indigenous. Or definitely the opposite of native if something is native, it's natural to that place. In the Everglades, they are having a problem with an invasive species, and that is the snake, a python. Somebody brought a python into the Everglades. It had babies. There is nothing in the Everglades that eats this species, so it's become invasive which means nothing will eat it, but it keeps growing, keeps having babies, and it is hurting the native species to that area. I saw a news article I would like to share with you. Let me remove this. I just saw this this morning when I was researching. Last minute, I saw this. So a snake, one of these pythons, Burmese python, Burmese python. I know a lot of people on Facebook are from Myanmar. It's the second largest country that watches me on Facebook, Myanmar. So the Burmese python is an invasive species in Florida. And one of them ate an alligator a five foot alligator that's as tall as a lot of teenagers five feet it's like a small it's like a large child five feet and a gator was eaten by a python you can look up the video i saw it this morning it was pretty gross i don't want to show it here let's check the chat right before we go. Mode is saying, I remember my biology teacher kept telling us the difference between crocodiles and <laughs> gators. I never cared. I never did either. I don't, and I don't think a lot of people do. Now, if I were teaching scientists on this channel, well, probably important, but I think everyone is here to learn just regular English. So, Let's skip the bison, buffalo, gator 
crocodile talk. We'll skip it. We'll skip it. Ah, uh, yes. Crocs. They are a type of footwear. Very easy for small children to wear. Invasive. Hakeem, invasive. It is a lot like the... I don't know if it's the adjective of invasion, but it could be. It makes sense. They sound a lot alike, right? Invasion would be a noun. So one country might invade another country. Invasive. But we only use that adjective for species. I wouldn't use it in a war. So just with animals. All right. Audi down there. Talking with Constantine. Okay. Back to this invasive. The last one, the last national park is my favorite. It's Acadia National Park because you know why? It's located in my state, my state of Maine. This is where I live. So I definitely live on the East Coast. My state is in red up there, and I live in the northern part of the United States. We might call it the Northeast, really close to Canada. That's where I live. And if you go to Acadia National Park, you might see something called Thunder Hole, which is pretty cool, I think. I'll make the picture bigger. But it's a part of the coast where when water goes into it, it makes a really loud sound like thunder. And I have visited Thunder Hole a few times. I think maybe this summer, Jamie and I will visit Acadia National Park. I will do a, maybe not live, but I will do an English lesson from Thunder Hole. And maybe this place too, Cadillac Mountain. Cadillac Mountain. In English, sometimes Mount will come before the name. Sometimes it will come after. We talked about Mount Rainier earlier. This is Cadillac Mountain. And if you go to Cadillac Mountain for sunrise, it is said you will be the first person in the United States to see the sun that day. Cadillac Mountain. Jamie and I have done it. We did it a couple, we did it about 20 years ago, but eh, no, almost 30 years ago. Oh my gosh, I'm getting old. Where's my hair going? All right. And the last one I would like to talk to you about is Grand Canyon National Park. I visited the Grand Canyon back in February and I did an English lesson from the Grand Canyon. You can look that up if you would like. All right. The last thing I would like to say before we get out of here is if you are looking for a free five-week English course, when this lesson ends, the comment section will open. If you're not watching on YouTube, go over to YouTube, speak English with this guy, find this lesson, leave a comment, not in the chat, we're all in the chat right now, but when this lesson ends, the comment section will open. You can leave a comment there. In the next 48 hours, I will use my phone and draw a number. All the comments will get a number, and the number that I pick will get a free five-week course from Amigo. If you use the link that will be in the comment section. There's a 51% off coupon there for you. It's a great course. I went to a class last week. I think it's a pretty good deal. Less than $8 a course for you to actually practice speaking. There is a short lesson at the beginning, and then you go into small groups to practice your speaking. Now, to join with Amigo, you have to be a B1. You have to be 16 years or older. The reason they do that is they want people who are there 
who are serious about learning and can have a conversation. So check them out. The owners of the company I have gotten to know over the last week, Chelsea and Ryan, they're super cool people. They will probably be in the class with you. I know Veronica Mark is another teacher on YouTube. She will be teaching some courses there coming up. I think it's a great deal. So check out that link. There's more information there. And I think that's it for this English lesson. I would like to thank you all for showing up. My man mode. Harry 300. Audie. Hope you're doing well. Mohammed. Hope you all have a good weekend. Baddest again. Nice name there. Arkan. Hope you're doing well. Jan. Oh, what's the main topic? The, the topic for this week, we are done, but it is going to replay and it is natural landmarks in the U.S. If you're looking for more English, there's the Grand Canyon and there's also one I did last year on man-made landmarks. It's the opposite. People made those. Nature made all the ones we talked about today. Zanep, hope you're doing well. Cassia, hope I'm saying that correctly. Yes, I will see you next time I'm out of here. Thank you, everyone. Maybe there will be a poll on YouTube. What should we do next? What should we do next? So don't forget, I'm ending this lesson now. Leave a comment for your chance to win. It's got to be YouTube only. YouTube, it's a better way to track the comments. So go over to YouTube, speak English with this guy. Look for the lesson, natural landmarks. Leave a comment there. Yulia, still with us. Mike, a lot of people have been here since the beginning. Constantine's still here. Radoslaw, Radoslaw, I know you from Facebook. Still here, been here the whole time. Yep, go for it. Check out that link. It's a great course. If you do sign up for the course, let me know. If you win the course, let me know how it went, please. Good luck to everyone. Adios, amigos. Leave a comment. See you next week.